I was always trying to create that perfect icon of humanity, a bridge between the spiritual and the celestial and the terrestrial. My name is Ron Bovard from Bovard Studio Stained Glass, and we create new stained glass windows and restore stained glass windows for public buildings throughout the United States. I started as an artist uh, in the early 70s. I had my first show in Carnegie Museum in 1972. I moved to Iowa in January of 1982 and helped start a company called Creative Glassworks. I was a painter. I had 25 one-man shows, most of them in New York City, some in Europe. When I moved to Fairfield, Iowa, I got introduced more seriously to the art of stained glass. Before that, I had t dabbled in stained glass as an art form in Pittsburgh. But when I moved to Iowa, uh, I really devoted myself uh, more and more to stained glass as a business. And a large part of our trade is the traditional arts and the stained glass heritage we create for the churches. Uh, there's nothing that's ever been done in stained glass that we can't do today or match in style or, or quality. We do all the different styles. For example, Louis Tiffany, his windows are up to six or seven layers of glass thick. It's a window on a window on a window on a window. And it creates this magical scene. And we get to restore those and take them apart and rebuild them. So we see all his secrets and how his craft was done. By doing restoration, we learn how to create and use all these techniques in our new windows for our clients, the churches, courthouses, libraries, and other types of public buildings. We have about 4,000 glasses to choose from. Uh, to match historic lost glass. Uh, but there's so many glasses that have been made over the centuries that to match it's pretty difficult. And notice that this is two layers of glass put on top of each other to get a third color. So when you put 4,000 choices that we have and you put two of them on top of each other, that's 4,000 times 4,000 colors you have to work with, which is 16 million. Now you put a third layer on that, and you've got 16 million times 4,000 choices. And a Tiffany window can be up to seven layers of glass thick. I've totally devoted myself to the craft of stained glass and, uh, and running this business. And I've hired artists that are more classically trained and are better than I am. I'm more of an art director these days. Uh, I look over the artist's shoulders and say, Do, you know, try this or try that. Like I say, you really have to put your own ego aside and recognize the talents that others have and acknowledge their talent and their own creativity. So before start to paint on the glass, we make a hand sketches. Um, we send those sketches to our customers. They correct. They will listen what they want to see on our drone and fix them. This is like first step before we start to paint on the glass. You can see that there are some faces on the window. These are some sketches of faces that Yuri painted for Old St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. Later, we give uh, those sketches uh, to the, our computer designer, and he makes for us uh, renderings. Uh, basically, take a lot of images into Photoshop, photos, pictures, paintings, and kind of work a collage out of those things to find a design that the client likes. Find something that looks pretty, but also holds the the meaning behind the windows. When I get a design that there's a really open committee on and that they want to work and they want to share like a bunch of information about their church, like their, their history or some kind of goal that they're going for and I can kind of help them get from uh, the meaning and the intention behind it and find something beautiful and aesthetic with it where you balance out those two things because you kind of have to weigh them both out. You can have a really strict, religiously correct window but it can be really ugly, or you can have a real beautiful window that misses the whole point. This is one of the windows for big nunnery in Arizona area. This is Saint Maximilian Rolbe, who was priest, and he was uh, tortured and killed in Nazi concentrating camp, uh, but he did not betray his face. I worked here for 10 years. It Basically, we learn from each other everything. This job is not exactly to make money. We work for 
eternity for future generations. After us, a lot of important stuff will be around. We start out with you know, all these separate pieces of glass and we have to imagine how it will look all together because you're working on one piece of glass, it goes in the kiln, gets fired, you bring it back and you have to imagine how it will look after the many layers have built up. So we start out with, this has only got about three layers of paint. This probably has at least eight. You can get up to 12 sometimes, depending on which color you add to your glass. I use stencils. These are cut out by hand, and then we, we put a layer of water-based paint onto the glass. And we use this, this badger hairbrush, smooth it out. And then once that's dry, then we can do a stippling or stencil on there and just stipple out however much, however much you want. And so with this, I did different layers. I turned it and did another stipple here and another stipple here and left the shadow and you get that kind of effect. Light is part of the, the artwork and the light is alive and makes it come to life. If you turn off your lights, you know, there's not much going on there. <laughs> the light is really part of the, the artwork. Uh, this is our assembly area where we, we fabricate new stained glass windows and we reassemble stained glass windows that we're restoring. This is the disassembly tank. The glazing cement that waterproofs and strengthens the window is a putty that's packed between the flanges of the lead came and the stained glass window. The main ingredient in that putty is lead oxide or powdered lead dust. When you breathe lead dust, it has four times the absorption rate into the bloodstream than if you eat it. So we disassemble it underwater so none of that lead dust gets into the air and pollutes our studio or affects our employees. And of course, at the same time, we're cleaning the glass. I'm an artist by heart. It is a great challenge and very rewarding to recreate or to restore windows that bring joy, or happiness to other people. It's just, there's no other feeling. This window that Mark Steele is working on is the First United Methodist Church in Waynesboro, North Carolina, that he's restoring, recreating the original metal matrix uh, when you restore a window, uh, you document it, you photograph it, and every step of the process that we create uh, during the day is recorded each day uh, for historic recreation of the project. And Mark has been with us 17 plus years, uh, so he's pretty good at this. <laughs> this window here was in pretty sad shape. Uh, it's got several breaks throughout. So from here I'll assemble it, then I will solder it, then we'll actually take it back to cement room and it'll go from there on. I push it in between the lead and the glass on the window. You want to fill all of the gaps and all the spots. Then you put your drying mixture on top so that it helps hold it in place while it dries. By brushing and scrubbing, it buffs the lead and then it polishes the glass. This whole frame came from a church in Bloomfield, New Jersey, and it's in pretty bad shape. We're gonna replicate it out of mahogany. And uh, you can see the joints are kind of coming apart there. I hate to hazard guess as to how old that frame is, but I'd say 100 years anyway. We'll usually start with the inside section, which we refer to as the parting stop. In other words, that's the very middle of the frame. The stained glass goes on one side of it, and usually the protective covering or insulated glass unit goes on the other side of it. We'll put that layer down first, and then we'll just start. Uh, we use a marine grade epoxy, and some nails too to hold stuff in place, and we'll actually start putting layers on top of that, uh, brick laying the joints so everything's nice and solid. 
It's teams and teams of people advance things much more quickly. So I find when I bring in a very talented artist into a group of other artists or glass painters or designers, when they start working together, they advance and grow much more rapidly than they would have if they were working individually. So this is one of the windows that we're recreating for the First Methodist Church in Burlington, Iowa, which you're going to see today. We're matching the historic windows that were lost in a fire. Uh, the, we built the window frames, the glazing systems, and the stained glass uh, to replicate uh, the ones that were lost in the fire. It just stands out. You can spot it from a mile away. It's just so beautiful and gorgeous. As far as challenges go, I find that the bigger the challenge, the more creative the solution and the challenges and the obstacles are what are advanced business because you either overcome them or you don't exist anymore. When you tell the truth and you speak from the heart, people believe you and trust you as they should. I love dealing with my customers. They're beautiful people and creating jobs for other artists and keeping employed and a lot of craftspeople. Someone who does things with excellence and has that spark of spirituality in their work, whether it's a carpenter building a house or whether it's a painter or a software engineer or uh, a photographer or someone who's making movies. It's just building that bridge between our everyday existence to our spiritual aspirations. And it's just so beautiful and, and such an honor to be in this craft and trade.